Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. We're gonna be discussing the basic brass fundamentals, primarily focusing on the French horn. Everything's like brass, 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 brass. Like, oh, is that some copper? Nope, brass. I like to refer to these basics as the brass player's toolbox or the BPT, because these skills are the foundation to becoming a successful brass musician in the future. The five basic principles for brass playing include posture, breathing, embouchure formation, buzzing, and articulation. Today we're going to start with our posture. For posture, I want you to be sitting with your feet flat on the floor like so, and your back will be facing away from the chair. So like I've done, I've brought my back forward. Perfect. I'm sure you guys are rocking it at home. This is going to be known as our perfect posture or our P squared. So some issues with having some improper posture might include, again, leaning against the chair, having your arm draped across it, or just having a hunched back. But while we're playing, it's super important that we keep ourselves sitting up tall so we can allow for more room in the lungs um, with some things that we're gonna get started with next, like our breathing. It's imperative that we keep this area as tall as possible. So while you're at home, I want you to relax for a second and then practice going from your relaxed state back to your P squared so we can get that kind of ingrained and saved in our BPT. Okay, while maintaining our P squared, let's begin our breathing process. So first, we're going to start with the inhaling portion, which that is just simply breathing in. While you're doing this, I kind of want you to think about painting. Have you ever painted in an art class, something for fun? While you're painting, you certainly don't want to go like with your paintbrush because that's going to make for some uneven um, collection of paint, some weird textures that we're not going for. So make sure it's a nice and smooth connected uh, stroke. Just like when we're breathing, we want it to be um, smooth and connected as well, and it should be very much supported. Uh, you want to think about it as like when you're filling up a cup, you fill from the bottom all the way up. So take a nice deep breath in with your mouth. And that brings us to the next step, the exhale. So again, the air should be smooth and a constant air stream. Um, this is going to help later with the volume or the dynamics of our sound when you're playing on the instrument and the speed of our lip vibrations. And this should feel as natural as possible. Some problems that you might get with breathing is excessive me moving in the chest. So that could be shallow breathing like, like that where it moves a lot. Um, or if you are, when, if you do this for excessive periods of time, feeling lightheaded, that generally happens if you don't release enough air when you exhale. Uh, another issue, um, that can come up later with the playing is when you have a slower air speed, uh, you're just not using enough sport support. So again, we want to think of it as a cup and breathe in, fill up from the bottom up to the top. Alrighty. So to practice this, we're going to do some counts in and out together with my snaps. We're going to breathe in for four and out for four. One, two, ready, breathe in, in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. Perfect. I'm sure you guys are doing a great job following along at home. Um, some other variations of this exercise would be breathing in for two counts and out for four. This is going to allow you to build up a little bit more stamina um, and develop some more deeper breathing. We're going to practice this exercise once. Again, we're going to breathe in for two counts and out for four. Ready, breathe in, two, and out, two, three, four, breathe in, two, and out, two, three, four. Perfect. Um, keep doing these on your own as much as possible. It's really going to help um, build up your lung strength and it's going to help you become a much better player. Again, let's store all of this in our BPT. We've got our posture, our breathing. We're doing pretty great so far. Um, for our next step, we're going to talk about the embouchure formation. So can you say the word mmm for me? Like you had a super duper good cookie or some mac and cheese or whatever food that you love. 
think of the word mmm and say that for me. I want you, while you're doing this, to go ahead and feel on your face. I want you to identify where you're feeling those vibrations. For me, it's um, here towards the back of the mouth or right here by the nose and under the eyes. Um, once you've identified where that is, I want you to um, begin. We're going to start with the, the mouth part itself. Uh, I want you to go ahead and keep a resting position. Then I want you to see to go ahead and firm around the corners like so. They should be firm but not tight because um, that will run, help us run into some issues a little bit later. We want to keep the center part as gooey feeling as possible. So a good way to think of this is as our jelly donut. We want it to be firm here on the outside and smooth, gooey, and delicious here on the inside. And so it should look like so. And while you're doing this, I want you to go ahead and feel up so you can kind of get an idea of what that's going to feel like for you on, um, on yourself. Now, keeping our jelly our donut in mind, we're going to say the word chew, like a choo-choo train. And while you do this, I want you to notice how relaxed your mouth is going to feel. Um, you should also notice that the tongue stays a little bit lower in the mouth. Um, and it should be at a resting position. While you say this, your teeth should be aligned. Um, and it will help form an oval-shaped aperture. The aperture is this point right here in the lips where it forms that shape. So go ahead and say the word chew again for me. Chew. And if you'll see, I'll do it one more time chew how the corners they're firm our centers of our lip our got our jelly donut really gooey and we've got that oval shaped aperture go ahead and try that a couple times on your own and then when you're comfortable again we're going to store this into our bpt and we're going to go ahead and get out our mouth pieces this is the french horn mouthpiece and the parts of the mouthpiece include the rim cup back bore bore and the shank so while we're doing this to start i want you to actually you're going to flip it around for me and we're going to stick the end of the mouthpiece into our mouth it's going to go in between your lips um, while you're doing this remember to keep your teeth open so it's going to be just like so i'll try to get a little closer so you can see perfect so while you're doing this i want you to practice our breathing remember breathing low filling up the cup having lots of support just practice breathing in and out for me it does make a couple funny sounds too but alrighty so the reason that we're doing this is it's going to help you feel how your steady airstream should be when we begin using the rest of the mouthpiece now I want you to go ahead and flip it around for me and go to your jelly donut position. Again, firm corners, gooey, nice, tasty in the middle. Perfect. And then we are going, I want you to go ahead and reach up, check just one more time for me. And then while you're in your um, jelly donut position, I want you to bring the mouthpiece up gently to the lips. For the French horn, you're going to have about 60% on the top lip and 40% on the bottom. So it's going to look a little like so. Just like that. And some common issues with that, um, with the mouthpiece, some people place them a little too low, like this, or a little too high, or maybe even off to the center. We definitely we want it to be as centered as possible. Um, and again, 60% on the top, 40% on the bottom. Then while you're doing this, I want you to take in a nice, deep, supported breath and blow out. Can you try it at home for me? I'm sure you all are doing a great job. Again, let's try that one more time. Jelly donut, and we're gonna take in a nice deep breath and blow into the mouthpiece. It does sound a little bit like a bumblebee too. Um, so again, some issues with buzzing might be a smiling, we're having smiling lips. So something like this. Uh -huh. 
this is an issue because it's where you've got your corners a little bit too firm. We've got to loosen them up just a bit. Um, some other issues, again, as we address, were those incorrect mouthpiece placements um, or having um, puffed cheeks like so oh. or excessive puckering with the mouth. And then some other issues, if you aren't getting the buzzing sound that you're wanting, uh, it just sounds a little bit more like air. Again, we want to firm up our corners. I want you to practice this on your own just a little bit. I like to call it the sweet spot. That's where you know you can put it up and get that nice uh, sound. So now we're going to work on maintaining our buzz for a few periods at a time. Um, we're going to start, we're going to Breathe in, and we're going to buzz into the mouthpiece for four counts. And then I'm going to give you four counts of rest, and we're going to try it again, and we're going to repeat this action a few times. One, two, ready. Oh. Oh. Alrighty, so now that we've done this, again, if you feel like you um, need a little bit more practice with that, feel free to practice on your own, but some really good exercises that are going to strengthen your lip muscles uh, and get you uh, improving a lot faster are sirens. And so if you ever heard like a tornado siren or even a fire alarm, um, we're just going to practice moving gradually up with our buzzing like so. And the more that you practice this, the higher and the lower you'll be able to go. So let's try that a couple times. Alrighty, so that's another one, a good one to remember. Store in your BPT um, and practice on your own. Another really great exercise is motorcycles. If you haven't ever seen or listened to a motorcycle, a lot of the time they'll um, gradually accelerate and then the gears will shift and it'll sound a little different, just like this. Da, da. And we want to mimic that with our mouthpiece, like so. Uh, uh. Perfect. So I want you all to try that a little bit on your own and see how that works, see how that feels for you. Motorcycle exercises are perfect for building um, much stronger lip muscles. You'll be able to be a lot more flexible and that's going to help your playing in the future. Moving on, we're going to start talking about articulations. So two articulations that are common are tonguing and slurring. First, we're going to start with our tonguing. So when you're doing this, I want you to remember that the tonguing should um, interrupt the airstream. It should never stop it. So kind of think of like a fire hose um, while you're holding it. You know, you got the water running through. And then if you pick it up and you bend it in the center, the water is going to stop completely. That is not what we're wanting when we're doing the tonguing. And we want to think of it running um, freely and then just slightly pinching it a little bit. So there should be a little bit of water still getting through. It should not com be completely stopped. Um, and that's going to help us get that sound that we're wanting. So it um, and some syllables to help with your tugging are D. D is going to be a bit of a softer articulation sound. The T sound t is going to be much more forward and evident. So let's practice those. We're going to start with the D sound first. And go ahead and do your jelly donut, firm up those corners, gooey in the center. Go ahead and get that buzz going for me. And then when you're comfortable, um, add in thinking of the D sound. <laughs> While you're doing this, the um, it's hard to show the inside of the mouth, but let's pretend my hand is the mouth. 
and right here is where your gums meet the teeth. This is exactly where the tip of your tongue should be hitting, and it should be a light tap. It should never be like you're petting the area. That's a little weird. Just a slight tap is what we're wanting to go for. Um, so go ahead and try that on your own again for me, and I will uh, show it here as well. Now we're going to add in the T sound syllable to provide that more forward and evident sound. Perfect. Alrighty. So while you're doing this, um, again, we want to start, um, along with our articulations, want to start developing an idea of pitches. So if you want to aim for a lower pitch, we want to think of an O syllable. And when we're aiming for an upper pitch, we're going to think of the E syllable. O, E, O, E. And I will show that here as well. And again, when you're doing this, we want to make sure we're not pushing in too hard with the mouthpiece. We want to just keep those corners a little bit more firm, and that's going to help reach some upper pitches. Some problems found with the tonguing articulation um, is tension in the tongue. So that could be um, just tonguing a bit too slowly and it's a bit more delayed than you're wanting to go for. Um, another issue is tonguing with clenched teeth. So keeping your tooth like this um, is going to be a problem. We want that, again, we want that air to be moving fluently. Um, and then some jaw movement. See? My jaw does not move whatsoever. It should not be moving um, while you're tonguing. Otherwise, it could look like this. Um, and that's not quite what we're wanting. Um, so the next articulation, again, is slurring. So for brass on a lip slur, that's the act of switching between two pitches with the same fingering or partial or harmonic. Um, and it's going to be, again, without our tonguing. Um, we're going to use the syllables O and E once again to switch between the two. Um, just a continuous up and down motion. And we want to make sure our lip buzz is continuous as we are moving through those. Alrighty, so now we are coming to the conclusion of our video. Just a quick overview. Today we talked about all of the basic fundamentals that go into our brass player's toolbox, our P squared, our perfect posture. We got our, our back straight, feet flat on the floor, um, which allows for, again, a more open diaphragm so we can breathe in and get those nice supported breaths that we need. Again, with breathing, think of it just like a cup. You fill up from the bottom up to the top. Um, and those nice supportive breaths really will help when we move into um, buzzing later on. Again, our embouchure. Remember that jelly donut, firm corners, gooey, nice and soft in the center. Um, with buzzing, again, jelly donut. And with our mouthpiece placement, 60% on the top, 40% on the bottom. And with our articulation syllables, D, the softer one, T, much more evident and forward sounding. And our O's when we're aiming for the lower pitches and E when we go into those upper pitches. Thank you so much. I hope this video has been helpful. Happy playing.